Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to another tutorial on non-metallic metal. First a quick shout out to all the people for the uh, amazing response on the last video. You guys are awesome! The palette we're using this time consists of four colors. Ceramot White from Citadel, you can use almost any white. Abaddon Black from Citadel, uh, you can also use almost any black here. Armor Brown from Baleo Model Air. We're gonna use French Blue from Vallejo Model Air. And lastly, we have Non Oil, uh, which is optional to use. You don't have to use it to achieve a good result, but it can help you in a very tiny way. Uh, I'm also gonna use Winsor Newton Series 7 brushes, both size one and triple zero. You don't have to use Series 7 brushes if you have a brush that you really, really like, or if you have another good Koblinski Sable brush from another brand. This is how I've set up my colors. Uh, we have ultramarine blue up top, uh, tank brown in the middle, and black at the bottom. I've separated the white to prevent it from running together with the other colors since we uh, use diluted colors. Uh, this palette also allows for a nice and large area to keep mixing on without having to be mindful of the space. First, I am mixing up a batch of base color to coat the sword surface with. You will have to mix more throughout the process of painting the blade, but a good start is to make enough for the first few layers, as we'll mix uh, brighter tints from each previous layer. Take a good chunk of blue, then mix in some brown into that blue. Brown color will help to desaturate the blue and make for a blue-black color. To make it even darker and to set it up for a good gray for the future, we're also going to mix in some black. Apply this dark foundation to the entire blade. Now, while this dry, we're gonna mix in a little bit of white to create the first dark gray blue. First, we need to decide where we're gonna put these reflections. Uh, what we're going to do is we have one side of the two planes have one reflection in the middle and the other side have two reflections at the tip of the blade and at the base of the blade. Right now I'm choosing to have a double reflection on the upper plane of the sword. The first step is to start moving your brush in short controlled strokes towards you in the air. At the same time you move the tip of the brush slowly towards the upper plane of the blade. I'm holding the blade at an angle to not have the strokes cross the plane at 90 degrees, but rather at a 45 degree angle. You want these strokes to be as thin as possible. It's also important to make sure that the paint is wet enough to be applied smoothly. Towards the middle of the blade, I leave a line, sometimes two, that isn't flush with the rest of the first layer. This will aid in creating a smoother blend whilst giving a line effect that we're going to continue to replicate throughout the process of painting the blade. Now, we're gonna go ahead and do the same type of lining technique to the center of the lower plane. I'm starting at the center, moving slowly outwards to the right, and then the same thing to the left. You want this to be a solid layer, so if needs be, apply a second coat. Make sure that you create a line separation on either side of the reflection area. I use the same technique on the upper plane closest towards the base of the blade. Don't forget to make that line separation towards the center of the blade. Lastly, we're gonna stroke the edges of the blade with the side of the brush and very carefully the center of the blade. The first highlight on the center ridge is okay to stroke with the side of the brush, but as we go along to brighter highlights, we will start lining the center ridge to ensure better result. Now 
When we mix in the white for the second layer, we'll also mix in a tiny bit of blue. This will increase the saturation in addition to the brightness and ultimately make for a starker contrast. Now, we're going to do the exact same technique as we did on the first layer, but leaving a little bit of the previous layer showing towards the center of the blade on the upper plane and towards the tip and the base of the sword on the bottom plane. This will create a smooth blend and give us the result that we're looking for. Now, on the bottom plane, I'm starting at the center again as I did in the first layer, moving my way out towards the tip and the base of the sword. I'm also highlighting the edges of the sword again. Lastly, we're going to make a straight line from the base of the sword to the tip running along the center ridge. This is a bit tricky and may force you to practice. I still mess up from time to time and if you do as well, just fix it later. You want to make sure you don't skip this step. Do it every time or at least every other time to support future highlights and keep colors rich. I recommend doing at least five of these highlights by mixing in a little bit of white every time as well as a little bit of blue every other time. Now, we've done a few highlights to get us up to a nice bright blue gray. At this stage, I swap out my size 1 brush for a triple zero. I want these lines to be very fine as we are almost up to a crisp white. Again, make sure to start the brush motion in the air, moving the tip slowly towards the sword to get nice and thin lines. Using the tip of the brush, I highlight the center of the ridge of the sword once more. Lastly, it's time for the pure white. Don't overuse it here, but just a very little to get those fine lines at the center of the reflections. I don't line the entire edge with the white, but just where the reflections are and a little bit past them. Now we take a little bit of black and make some small cuts and shipping into the blade surface. Since this is not meant to be a display piece but a gaming piece, we can cover up any mistakes with techniques like this. I also think it makes the surface look a little bit more visually interesting and not so flat. Then take some crisp white and give each cut a tiny reflection. This is the light that hits the bottom of the edge right where the cut is. Make sure that you double check how the sword is being held by the miniature so that the white is on the bottom side. Make sure these lines are very thin or it won't look right. This is the process of how I did the swords for my Stormcast Eternals. You can obviously use this technique for most weapons such as hammers and axes, just as I did. If it has a curve, move the reflections with the curve and adapt to each sword. You can also use other colors such as purple and green. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you like it, please leave a comment and a thumbs up. Any feedback that you will provide will be taken into consideration for the next video. A special thanks goes out to all the patrons whose support helps us to create these videos for free for the community to use. This amazing editing was done by Martin Kramer. Funding for this tutorial comes from Jonathan Edlund, Mark Alexander, Carl Martin, Jason D. Fluffer, and Arthur Trettle. The palette I used here was a Studio XL wet palette by Redgrass. 
I am Oscar Lars. See you next time.